and chlorophyll A concentrations among the three locations over time, which ranged approximately, again, from zero to three UGLs. What is believed to have caused these patterns during this time of 2015 to 2016 are the changes in the water temperature and light levels, specifically in those summer months. The amount of rainfall may have also played a part in the fluctuations, or in this case, the more constant chlorophyll A concentration levels of these polar locations. These patterns are therefore related to seawater properties and oceanic, oceanographic processes as a whole. Physical and chemical properties are two of several branches of oceanography, including biological and geological properties. Variables under chemical properties include atmospheric and oceanic perimeters, such as salinity patterns, dissolved oxygen levels, and nitrogen levels, which Webb states is the main nitrogenous compound utilized by primary producers in the ocean and is a major nutrient required by photosynthesis. As far as salinity, research states that producers in the ocean Research states, excuse me, that maintaining a specific salt concentration in the blood is a necessity for normal growth and metabolism of aquaculture species. This can mean that any pollution in these polar locations can affect the salinity levels and have a major physical impact on the overall nutrients within these arrays. A physical property, on the other hand, is the temperature fluctuations whereas the temperature increased in the sea surface of these locations. The chlorophyll of concentrates decrease and remain constant for long periods. Primary production and geography are in relation as well, as the intersection of the locations based on the latitude and longitude clearly affects the levels of productivity. Poles are referred to as high latitude and therefore is quite different than the equilateral, equilateral regions or zones referred to as temperate latitudes, such as endurance, a pioneer or Argentine basin arrays. Although the chlorophyll A concentrations did slightly vary at points due to the fact that the water in the pole locations are cold at all depth levels, mixing is able to occur all year, which distributes the nutrients throughout the water. However, even though there is constant mixing, there is no light and therefore no productivity during the winter months, which is proven with the provided graph. Proximity to shore influences this data somewhat due to upwelling, which is the process by which deeper water is brought to the surface. However, the thermal clean or region of the water column where there is a dramatic change in temperature over a small change in depth is almost non-existent or at least low within these regions for the majority of the time, which is why the concentration levels were, no, were so similar throughout the year. A question I have about changes in primary production at the ocean surface over time is the impact of other variables on the production, such as ocean acidification and high winds, and also more in-depth research on CO2 sequestration, which is the storing of carbon, and updated scientific mitigation plans to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide, ultimately reversing the negative influences it's had on the oceans and the climate change within the planet. This study of these three specific polar locations is very rewarding not only as a scientist, but to share this vital information to the general public as well, reiterating the importance of existing primary production, the properties and how they impact the levels during different periods to grasp a greater understanding of what could be done to save the oceans and the planet while there's still time. Thank you.